Um, and we are recording the meeting just because there's some folks that can't make it. Um, so we're going to get started right away. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate everyone taking time out of their busy schedules. One, to be here, but two, to also present at our event. And two weeks from today, uh, we will be there. And we're very, very excited. There's um, lots to do. Oh, I see some familiar faces. This is so fun. Um, there's lots to do and, and lots to uh, still work out with logistics. But um, today's goal for the meeting is to really help our presenters feel grounded and um, feel uh, informed about what the day is going to look like and um, what to expect. So that's what we're going to go with. So before I start, uh, my name is Deneen Diamond. I'm the lead for the Center of Excellence for Health. I'm really excited um, to offer the Youth Mental Health Symposium for the second year. Some folks that are on the call were um, able to present last year, so I'm sure that they would be happy to share stories if you have questions and concerns, maybe at the end if we have time. Um, but the event, um, just to give you a little background information before we do a little roundabout of introductions, um, started with kind of just a thought of mine, and then um, I dove into the research world and worked with our head researcher here at the Department of Education and did some focus groups with youth in the province. So all of the requests and all of the things that go into the event are actually from the students and their student and their needs um, surrounding positive mental health. And if anybody's interested, I certainly can send you the rationale and also the report that came out of that research. So if you are interested in me sending that, I certainly can send that along to you because it's a, it's a wonderful document. And what's lovely is that our research um, that we did within uh, the focus groups actually coincides with the um, uh, the World Mental Health um, Mental Health Report that went out. Uh, oh my goodness, um, a long, I think it was two years ago, and it 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 really spoke the same kind of language, which was so lovely. And you'll see that quoted in there. Um, so without further ado, I am going to do some introductions, and then I'm going to hand it off, and I'll just go down the road, and you can introduce yourself. Uh, tell us where you live and what session you're going to be offering at the Youth Mental Health Symposium. So welcome. I hope the event is going to be as beautiful and as energized as last year. Uh, I know it will be because we have a beautiful team working with us and I could not do this on my own. Um, first, I'm going to introduce Robin. Robin, can you just tell us who you are and what you do for the team? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Robin Allaby. I'm a retired educator and administrator. I had the pleasure of working with Deneen at FHS for a number of years before I retired and she went to the department and um, she recruited me last year just to help on the organizing committee with communication and taking that piece off of uh, the table for her because she has a full-time job and this symposium is almost a first full-time job. So uh, that's why you see me reaching out and um, trying to communicate and bring all the pieces together with the help of V, of course, who was her uh, intern the last two years and now Emily, who has stepped in. Awesome, thank you, Robin. So, so, Emily. So I'm, ba I'm basically Janine's gopher. <laughs> I love it, I love it, thank you. Emily, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Emily. I am Deneen's intern for the summer for Center of Excellence for Health. Um, I'm really excited to be here. I am finishing my undergrad next year at St. Thomas University. Um, I'm doing a double major in criminology and sociology, and my plan is to become a teacher. That's always what I've wanted to do. So I'm really happy to be with the department and the team and to learn lots of fun stuff this summer. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Emily. And I'm really quickly, I know this takes time, but I think it's really important. I, I usually do a little kind of get to know you activity at the beginning of any of my meetings and people that know me know that's how I start meetings. It takes some time, but I do think it steps kind of uh, just kind of settle in and get to know everybody. So I'm just going to go in order of the people on the screen. Uh, Laura Noble. Hi, everyone. Can you actually hear me? My microphone is being weird. Oh, awesome. Last meeting it wasn't, that's great. Um, my name is Laura Noble. Um, I'm a resource teacher at Leo Hayes High School in Fredericton. Um, and on the 15th, I am going to be presenting on the importance of positive role models and positive representation for the queer community uh, for young people. Awesome, thank you, Laura. We're so excited to have you. Uh, okay, Lauren Whiteway. 
name is Lauren. I am a community program coordinator with the Canadian Mental Health Association in Moncton. Uh, and I'm going to be presenting on mental health advocacy toolbox. So how to self-disclose in a safe way. Excellent. Thank you so much. Michelle, Sam Coy, am I saying that right? Sam Co, close enough. Sam Co, okay. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Michelle. I live in Toronto and I'm going to be presenting with Jack.org. Not alone. Uh, Shastlin on the call is also with me. Uh, we're going to be talking about what mental health is and how to support your own mental health and others. Excellent. Thank you. I'll hand it right over to Chastlin. Chastlin, we can't see you, but I know you're there. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, can. perfect. Sorry, it's a different computer. I'm not sure how to work the, the camera yet. <laughs> Um, so my name is Chaselyn. I'm from Annie Kanish, Nova Scotia, and I will be presenting with Michelle for Jack.org. And I am in my third year of human kinetics at St. of X. And Perfect. I'm really excited. <laughs> um, just putting in the chat, Tracy, you say you can't hear anything, but it's working for, I believe, everybody. Uh, maybe shut down and come back into the meeting. That might work. It might be Oops. if she clicks the little speaker button. I've had this happen before. Sometimes you need to change it on your laptop or whatever you're on just to click audio. And it Ava, might be something there. Ava, do you mind putting that in the chat while we continue? That would be lovely. Yes, I forgot she couldn't hear. I'm like That's speaking right. as if she can hear me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to just do a little blurb on Jack.org. We're very blessed to have the two presenters come. Um, they were part of the keynote last year, and we are very fortunate to have them again this year. Uh, two different presenters, um, but they also they always deliver such a beautiful message to our students um, surrounding the importance for supporting yourself, but also looking in our communities to find supports, which is so lovely, um, and um, looking at their own story and, and what they've done to get where they are. So we're very, very blessed to have them again this year. So I want to say thank you, and uh, we're looking forward to that keynote. All right, where did I end? Uh, now I have Brett. Brett, our RBC Olympian. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Brett Himmelman. Uh, I'm an RBC Olympian and uh, Team Canada a canoe uh, sprint athlete. Um, for those who don't know what canoe sprint is, it's uh, paddling on one side of a very narrow boat, uh, trying to go as fast as you can down a straight line. Uh, I'm here uh, from Halifax, Nova Scotia, and my presentation is on uh, like evaluating, developing, and sometimes changing uh, your coping skills for mental health in an ever so changing environment. Awesome. Thank you. Ainsley. Hello, I'm Ainsley. I'm the programs manager at the Gaia Project. I'm going to be doing a and I'm in Fredericton, and I'm going to be doing a session on um, transforming eco anxiety into climate action. Excellent. Thank you so much. Jen Grant. Good morning, everyone. Jen Grant, pronouns she, her. Happy to be with all of you this morning. Um, I'm going to be presenting a, a presentation called The Power of No in uh, helping kids talk about quieting their voices and how do they manage all the external influences being thrown at them that are clouding their decisions. So looking forward Excellent. to a great day. Excellent. Thanks so much. We appreciate you coming again this year, Jen. Uh, Tracy, Landry, I hope you can hear us now. Perfect. Well, the Exit Book, everyone, good morning. Um, I'm Tracy Landry, and I'm going to be co presenting with my wonderful partner, Nathaniel Fels. We're going to do a session on how to be an ally. Excellent. Thank you, Nathaniel. Right over to you. And someone in the chat wants to know where's your flag from? Uh, good morning. My name is Nathaniel Fells from Digby, Nova Scotia. To all my Scotians out there, God's country. <laughs> uh, I'm the Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Lead for the Anglophone East School District. Like Tracy said, we're going to be focusing on how to be an ally and what that looks like and give some techniques uh, that will also support you know, your mental health. Advocating for people is certainly difficult, so doing it in a very safe and healthy way is important, especially for our, our youth. Um, and then it's a Pan-African flag, so this flag represents... Uh, North American African Canadian uh, heritage, and it's about strength, pride, uh, and perseverance. So the red represents the blood of the people. Black is is for black people, color of skin, and then green represents the motherland. So this is a flag that has been used for about a century and a half, 
Um, and then you'll see it paired also with Kwanzaa quite a bit and then Guzu Saba, which are the seven principles of African uh, North American ancestry and heritage. So that's where the flag's from. And if you want one, let wow. me know. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Nathaniel. And I'm a You're Nova welcome. Scotian, so I know there's yeah. some on the table. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, thank you. Over to Lisa. Oh, we can't hear you, Lisa. Sorry, I just had a mouse issue I'm turning on That's my all right. mic. Um, I'm Lisa DeLuca. I'm the learning specialist for welcoming newcomers in cultural relations. And my session isn't really me. I have three um, amazing high school students who are part of MVMC's uh, Imagine NB program who are going to be leading a session focusing on how uh, having a sense of belonging is important to mental health and really focusing on how Canadian-born students and newcomers can build connections to to support that. Awesome, thank you, Lisa. We're really excited to have the students part of that presentation. Okay, over to Jesse Brown. Morning. I just want to make sure you guys can also hear me. Well, mic check. Perfect. Okay, I'm in my office on wheels, so I had to just make sure. Um, I'm Jesse Brown. I'm from Moncton, New Brunswick Community Schools with Anglophone East School District, and I'm going to be presenting on how internal dialogue shapes your life, and then the importance of self love in there with that. Oh, so important. We started our meeting last uh, yesterday about our self care practices. So thank you, Jesse. That's lovely. Over to Claire. Hey everyone, uh, Jesse. I have ADHD, so I love the idea of talking about internal dialogue and its effect because that's literally how I realized that I had it because chatting all the time up here. Uh, so hi everyone, my name is Claire Layton. Uh, I'm a researcher for the Department of Education. I believe Deneen was talking about our Youth Mental Health Symposium report. I'm the author of that report, uh, so just to give you an idea of who I am. And uh, this was actually something that came out of the conversation that we had the first year. My presentation is on unpacking the idea of high functioning mental illness and kind of introducing uh, the idea of living well with mental illness and kind of reframing uh, things in, in those in that language, because I know that this idea of high functioning mental illness is something that is floating around um, their spaces in terms of like TikTok and other um, mediums use that language a lot. So kind of unpacking that and reintroducing slash reframing into this idea of living well with mental illness. Awesome. Thank you, Claire. And Claire is a part of my team and she's a blessing every day. Thanks, Claire. Um, Andrew Pulverson. Thanks. Happy to be here. So I'm going to be presenting. So I'm a learning specialist, Department of Education, Early Childhood Development. I have the honor and privilege of working with Deneen uh, and have for many, many years uh, from Leo Hayes to FHS to here. Um, I swear she keeps following me. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be doing a, a session. I'm responsible for school counseling, mental health. I'm going to be doing a session on um, students and their role in creating positive school culture, uh, especially as young leaders. And so, so trying to empower them to to be leaders in their school, even though they may have their own struggles and and as they kind of work through adversity, but how they can be well-being champions as part of that. Um, so looking at their school culture, navigating pressures, um, and how to how to champion this work uh, in their own building. So that it's not just uh, I'm, I'm going to go learn. I'm going to go bring something back. Awesome. So. Thank you. And that's exactly what we want. We want this to spread and, and not be a one shot deal. That's right. Thank you, Andrew. Over to Megan Crosby. I'm just in, in my classroom here. So I'm Megan. I am from Moncton, New Brunswick. It'll be my first time presenting here, but I will be presenting on financial wellness for you. So I know I recognize Andrew. He knows my passion for financial literacy. So I will be, be talking to kids about uh, changing the way they think about money and, and financial health. Excellent. Thank you, Megan. And Ava Power. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Ava. First of all, I just wanted to say I was literally thinking the whole time while everyone was speaking, like if I was in high school and I could choose from any of these presentations, I literally don't know what I would choose because there's so many good ones this year. No, honest to God, like everything that everyone's saying is just it resonates with me so much, especially with my high school self. So um, great presentations to choose from. But I'm 20 years old. I'm originally from Miramichi, New Brunswick, but I live in Moncton now for school. So a little bit of a switch from last year. Um, I'm a college student. I'm currently in marketing and the presentation I'm going to be doing is on uh, 
just coexisting with your anxiety or just whatever mental health um, you deal with. And mostly anxiety though. So it's called anxiety is not your enemy and just living seamlessly with it, how to kind of make it your friend rather than to resent it. Because I think that's a really important part of life and living with mental health. And uh, yeah, so I'm really excited to be back this year. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Ava. And I believe last but not least is Britt. Hi there, I'm Britt Floyancic. I work with Partners for Youth. We're a nonprofit out of uh, Fredericton, New Brunswick, so that's where I'm at today. Um, I wear different hats with PFY, um, but I'm coming at it with our youth mental health coordination role. Um, so over the year, over this year, we've kind of connected with different um, areas. Own so up in Miramichi, we did Woodstock, Saint Stephen um, areas that would bring the high school students together. Um, and so one of my workshops within that was about um, looking at a mental health journey. So that's what we're going to deliver today or during the symposium. Um, so essentially giving them some time to reflect and engage within their own experience of how their life has shaped them. So we kind of look at ACEs a little bit um, and trying to destigmatize just your experience in life, um, create some emotional literacy and um, awareness and empathy building a bit too within that. Um, and then the goal is to get them to work through that and um, myself and two other facilitators will be engaging with them and chatting through that all. And the goal is then to connect them to PFY Connect. So with Partners for Youth, we have a free mental, um, a free, oh my gosh, counseling program where we provide um, youth from 14 up until 24, 25, uh, free counseling for eight sessions. So that is our next step. We're trying to then create an actual plan where to go next um, on their journey. <laughs> so that's what we're looking at. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I hope I did not forget anybody. The screen kept changing. So if I did not get to you, please put your hand up right away. But wow, what a great lineup. I'm going to just, uh, I guess, echo Ava's uh, thoughts and feelings. And I was getting the chills the whole time. I know that took a long time for us to get through, but I think it's going to help bring this event um, to another level because even knowing who the presenters are in your building that you're with um, really brings a cohesive energy. And I'm very much... Um, um, uh, a believer in, in we, when we enter a room and the culture of that of that place and, and what that looks like. And, and I think that's why the students really enjoyed um, last year's day so much. So I'm going to get right to the business. Um, just to let you know, we are 200 students registered. That was our max. We have um, now, I think, 38 on the waiting list. As students um, drop out, we will fill those in with students that are on the, if they do, um, can't come or transportation is an issue, which we're hopeful that it has not been an issue as of yet, um, then um, we will fill those gaps in. And all of the registrations came in timed, so it's all equitable, accessible across the province, um, and we have that all charted. So everybody has their sessions. I'm really happy to say that every single student got their very first choice, which is unheard of. Um, uh, so it all worked out, which was so lovely. We have uh, 23 students from the north and 13 students from Charlotte County that are spending the night before. They're spending the night at St. Thomas uh, residence, and then they're going to pop over to the Woo Center in the morning. We're going to have beautiful breakfast there waiting for them. Um, and then that brings us uh, to the start of the day where buses will be coming and registration. And I have a whole team that's going to get us uh, to the finish line of that so that we can start right at 10 o'clock. So I'm going to share my screen because this is the most important, I guess, information for you. I will send. Um, oh, shoot. That's not what we want. We want this. OK, now you don't need to see my email. Um, so this is the agenda. I will send this out, so don't feel like you have to take notes. So this is the full day schedule. Um, as I just said earlier, uh, registration is going to start at um, uh, 9.30 for general, but 9 o'clock, those folks that are um, spending the night will be there a little bit earlier. We're having the whole nutrition break set up um, when they arrive. Last year, that was a great feedback from the students. Um, we had the nutrition break later in the morning, and I, in my head, did not think that students in high school getting on a bus at six o'clock probably do not put anything in their stomach, so they were starving. Um, so it's really important to have that set up when they arrive. 
Then we are going right to the auditorium where we're going to have our RBC um, COE welcome. And I should say that RBC is our number one uh, sponsor. They once again sponsored the event of $25,000 um, for the event. And we have other sponsors. And right now we're at um, about 48,000 uh, donated, which is absolutely amazing. Um, we're going to have Chief Ron Tremblay do a welcome with the students, which is lovely. And he was here last year and wanted to come back. Uh, we found out yesterday that the minister is unable to attend because legislation is going to be in session. But Ryan, our uh, deputy minister, is going to be filling in, which we're very excited about. Then we are going to review the agenda. The New Brunswick Youth Council is actually going to talk about the work that they do for a little five minutes so that the students know what they can do after um, the Youth Mental Health Symposium and, and maybe some resources that they can reach out to. And we're going to do a warm up. Um, Brett, um, who's here with us today, is going to be a doing a warm up with his partner in crime. Um, and they are going to do just a little kind of um, uh it's a this or that kind of game where the students get to move because that's a lot of sitting um, in one morning. Then we have our beautiful keynote speakers from Jack.org who you just met. Um, and we do need to allow a 15 minute time for pre and post surveys. And those pre and post surveys are done on paper and they're done on paper on purpose because we really would love the electronics to stay away or out of sight. Um, I do not tell the students they need to do that. That is their choice. I am not going to police that. Um, but last year, I, I would say 75% of the adults could not believe that the students were so engaged and not on their phones, which is exactly what we would like to do again this year. So then we're going to have lunch and door prizes. Um, we have a beautiful yoga teacher, Mike Thomas, who has... Um, graciously um, said that he would love to teach a yoga class to the students. Um, one of the outcomes that came out of our, um, our research last year was that the students said they wanted time of downtime at lunch. So we're only offering 20 minutes of like an activity. The rest is just downtime for them to network, get to know other students um, and, and that type of thing. Um, so breakout session number one, then transition to breakout session number two, um, and student breakout session is um, two fifty or one fifteen to two and two fifteen to three. So that's when you folks um, really need to be there. So if you are traveling that day and you can't make the morning, there is no stress for you to get there. I would recommend that you try and get there by twelve so that you can have lunch with us. Um, and uh, lunch is provided for you, and um, and then we can get you settled into your room. If you're there for the entire day, which we would love, um, you're more than welcome to come for the entire day and take in the entire event. Um, then we will get you settled into your room, and Robin's going to talk about that in just a minute. Then we are transitioning back to uh, the auditorium where we're going to do a little thank you and some door prizes. And then we are loading the buses with some frozen yogurt bars, which the students loved last year. And they're also going to receive a QR code for the feedback in the survey. Um, and I'm just going to stop. Well, actually, I'll leave it there for a minute. But the QR code, um, the reason why we're doing that in this in this manner this year is because we feel that students when they're back going back on the bus and doing their transportation, it's really um, important for us to get the timely feedback that right after they leave. And when you when you send out surveys after the fact, they don't seem to get done as as I guess as much as we want. So, any questions about the agenda? I know that was a lot. Lovely. I'm stopping sharing so I can see your beautiful faces. Um, so the day is going to be amazing. Just to let you know, we're having music played the entire time. Students had to send us in their registration two of their favorite positive songs, which makes such a beautiful feel um, of the event. And if you are interested, not a have to, because I know everyone's busy. If you are interested and you want to send two of your positive songs and hear them during the day, please feel free to send them to Emily Mason, who is my uh, intern, um, and she will make sure that those, those are added to the list. And Emily, you can just put your email in the uh, chat for everybody. Um, I know that I have positive songs that are already on the playlist, so um, and the playlist looks amazing. So uh, I'm hopeful that we can copy it and have it for ourselves. Um, so I'm going to hand it right over to Robin to talk about your needs and what is needed for your presentation. Sure. Thank you, Deneen. Um, yes, Deneen already mentioned that every student has gotten their um, first choice 
And every student has for their second choice was either their second or their third. So we're really happy about that. And I'm not sure if you mentioned, Deneen, we have 33 schools represented. So 200 kids from 33 high schools across the province, which is very exciting. I'm going to reach out to you um, just when we're off this meeting and I will send you the copy of that agenda. So you have that to print off if you'd like. I'm also going to uh, send you um, either today or in, in the next few days a parking pass um for parking i will give you a heads up it's graduation day at umb campus that day so if you are coming you might want to just allow a little bit of time and and you know practice those mental health deep breaths and uh <laughs> patience and all those kinds of things because it's it's going to be a challenge but when you plan things ahead sometimes you know the universe just works in funny ways i'm also going to reach out to you rooms have been assigned to all of you and um, Emily and I are going to the Wu Center tomorrow to do a walkabout. Uh, v assigned rooms based on uh, your numbers because there is, of course, the auditorium at the Wu Center and the Chancellor Room, which is quite a big room. And then there are seven other breakout rooms of various sizes. So we just want to make sure that you've been assigned a room that will meet your needs. And when I reach out to you, I will ask if you have any specific requests. So um, all of these rooms have audio visual, you know, the, the board and the uh, projector, but sometimes people like the, the room set up in a U, sometimes folks like it set up in, you know, tables of two or whatever. So I, I, we can try the best we can to do that for you. Uh, and if you, if you have any, um, you know, specific things that we can help you with, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us know, but we'll do that individually. I don't want to take the time to do that in the meeting here because some of you will be good to go. I did reach out on Monday, it's today, Wednesday, I think Monday morning, I did connect with everyone and just gave you whether you were presenting one session or two and uh, which session and what your numbers are, because I know some people have handouts and uh, sometimes it's just really helpful when you're presenting and you know you've got 14 people or you've got 21 people or in, in almost all of our sessions are below 28. Um, and that was at the request of youth from the the um, last year's uh, group that we did with them that uh, Claire had alluded to. Um, they did request they didn't want to be talked at, you know, for the whole time. And they're, they're teenagers. I think we all can appreciate that. So I know you'll all be mindful, you know, of that. Um, one or two of the groups are larger and that, that will go in the auditorium. Uh, I think one of them was a mental health toolbox or coping kit that I know a number of you had had requested. So that one is a bit larger. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, I guess just based on last year's feedback as well. Um, kids originally didn't want to be talked at for an hour. So last year we had sessions that were 30 minutes thinking that was at the kids request or at the youth request and the feedback from the youth after was it wasn't quite long enough so they they figured that out on their own by the time with a half an hour as as you as presenters know five minutes or so to introduce yourself and get going and then to have a wrap up it only leaves you know 18 20 minutes so we we've, we've extended it to 45 minutes which i think is probably a sweet spot for teenagers um, and for presenting as well, it gives you a good 35 minutes or so to get into the meat of your presentation. Okay. So as Janine said, I guess I echo, we're really, really excited. We've got a very um, diverse group, but I couldn't help but thinking as I was listening to all of you introduce yourselves, how wonderful it is when people come together, when we're all on the same page with common goals to improve mental health for youth and for all of us and to make it okay to not be okay sometimes and to make it okay to lean on other people and learn from each other and you know it's it's a lifelong journey it's not something that just teenagers are going to have um it's going to be something that we all deal with from time to time throughout our, our lives so how wonderful is it that we're talking about it and providing sessions where they can learn the skills rather than trying to figure it out as adults as many of us did right yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Robin. And you probably just realized why she is on the team. Uh, lovely comments. I'm being very mindful of time. It's 10 o'clock. Um, I do. I just kind of want to repeat what Robin said. Um, you know, it's so important for us and for as us as adults 
to to really speak about that we all have mental health. We wake up with mental health. We go to bed with mental health. There are days where our mental health is just the best. And right now I'm feeling pretty good from meeting all of you. But there's other days where it's not so good. So um, the students really just want to have tools and techniques that they can use when it's not so good. And that's really what they spoke about in the in the research was that they just want to have tools that they can put in their back pocket for when they're not having the best day. And I learn something every time I speak to somebody um, about mental health and what they use for their self-care practices and what that looks like. So we're all gonna learn from each other. I am so grateful and thank you to have everybody um, that's going to be presenting. We are beyond excited about the event. The students are, I've had students email me. I've had students phone me. I had the cutest phone call from a student from Graham and Ann and is just beyond excited that he gets to leave the island for this event um, and uh, for school. Um, anyways, um, I would just if one little piece. Can Michelle and Chaslin just stay on the call just for a minute? Um, but Again, so thankful. If you have any questions, any concerns, please feel free to reach out to myself or Robin or Emily, um, and we will make sure that you are comfortable. You don't need to bring anything with you except for your beautiful self. The food is provided. Um, if you do need something specifically when it comes to technology, I would suggest that you bring your own. Uh, we will do our best to try to accommodate that, um, but the technology piece is a little bit uh complicated this year with the graduation happening because the Woo Center technology crew is actually supporting UNB graduation. Uh, we have a backup plan. We have FHS students and the FHS tech teacher that is um, coming and going to support everything that we need, especially the keynote. Um, but certainly if you need something specifically for your individual session, I would recommend that you bring it. Um, and then we will do our best to make sure that we have that set up for you when you're starting. Robin. I, I would just um, say as well, no matter what time you're coming, whether it's in the morning or joining us for lunch, there will be a table in the foyer for presenters. So when you come in, you don't have to wander aimlessly trying to find your way. So either Emily or, or I will be, someone will be at that table all day and all of the rooms are kind of in a, in a circular uh, area in the Wu Center and there will be signage on all the doors with your name and the title of your session and we'll help you and direct you so that take that worry away you'll just come in and either see me or see Emily or you know Deneen one of us will be at that table for presenters and we will guide and direct. Absolutely yes so thank you so much again Please feel free about any of your needs, anything that you know that you need to be in your best place that day. Obviously, things are going to happen. Um, we may have people that cancel last minute. That is, you know, up to the universe. So um, please just come and, and be, be excited. Um, does anybody have any questions? Wow, that's awesome. Okay, we did that in 33 minutes. I'm going to stop recording, but if Michelle and Chaslin can just stay on the call with Robin and Emily, that'll be lovely. And we will see you two weeks from today. We'll be starting 10.03. Wow. Ah, have the most beautiful day.